So welcome everybody. Let me start by thanking the organizers for setting up this meeting and for all of you to, for showing up. So the story I want to tell you today has nothing to do with the <laughs> original title of the session. There will, there will not be neither ions nor measurements. And it will be a story instead about gauge theories and about Rydberg quantum simulator. And the reason why I want to tell you this story because it's stimulated by very recent experiments. And I think this is the kind of audience where I would like to leave this theory experiment discussion to be done. And uh, so just to give you an idea of the fidelity of this talk, I mean, uh, my collaborators have 99.99% 99 .99 fidelities with the <laughs> content uh, of the work. So you can see my contribution is very minimal, especially Federica and poetry. And if you are curious, this is the archive. Uh, there we go. Not working. So the starting point for our discussion are two recent works. Uh, one is an experiment performed in the group of Misha Lukin by Julia and collaborators. I think Julia will talk about this tomorrow. And the other one is a numerical experiment uh, in the group of Ashley Vishwanath. And the bottom line of these two things is that uh, they show evidences of what is so-called a deconfined phase of matter in a Rydberg atom quantum simulator, or to better say, in a model that describes Rydberg atom quantum simulator. Okay? What this deconfined phase of matter means in the language of condensed matter theory, this is what is called a topological quantum spin liquid. Okay? And uh, the goal of my talk is neither to do experiments nor simulations, but uh, to try to understand what is the origin of why this, actual, this phase exists. Okay? And in some kind of uh, semantic dissonance, I will call this Rydberg spin liquids because we will, saw, we will see that the class of Hamiltonians that actually are able to host spin liquids here are very different from the ones that uh, typically people consider in, in uh, solid state physics, for instance. Okay? So why are we interested in this question at all? You could say, okay, the experiment has evidence, uh, the numerics has evidence, why do you bother about trying to understand what is the theoretical origin of a phase? And I think there are a few motivations. Uh, of course, there is one which is inside of microscopics. So we can try to see whether we can design even better architectures where to observe these phases. We can see whether one, well, this is just a lucky model, or if these systems actually host larger classes of dynamics that host these kind of phases. And in particular, what I think is important is that if one has, for instance, an analytical solution, this gives us insights about diagnostics. And what I will show you today is that actually there is a class of exactly soluble models which have an exact dual description in terms of Z2 plus X theory. These models, they have only two body Hamiltonians. No? So they are very simple. In, con in solid state, you will think that the equivalent would be kind of Kitaev-like models. Uh, but they have kind of weird interaction patterns. Okay? And however, some of these results also lead to some unclear physical interpretation of the order parameters that uh, were utilized in the experiments. Now, this is the motivation from the solid state side. I cannot uh, uh, skip this slide because this is my personal motivation for this, which is an history of failures. And uh, at the very end of the day, I mean, people that try to study gauge theories in quantum simulator, at the very end, we would like to be able to understand something about this. This is the phase diagram of quantum chromodynamics, the theory that is believed to describe strong interactions, the function of temperature and biochemical potential. The only regimes, well, I mean, actually talking about this very close to Mainz uh, is a statement because in Mainz there is a very strong community that studies these things. And this is the only part of the phase gamma which is really well understood. The rest is not understood. Okay? So I think one of the grand challenges of quantum simulation and in general quantum information processing is to be able to tell, give some information which is novel on this phase diagram. Of course, we are very far from here, from there. We have actually failed, I think, in, in terms of theory in understanding uh, how one can do that. But in particular, there is one thing that links this story to the story of quantum spill liquids, is that we want to understand what are the mechanisms that in a quantum simulator, simulator can lead a uh, transition between confined and deconfined phases. Okay? So this is, was my personal interest in, in this kind of problems. So the outline uh, that I will be telling you about is uh, starting from this challenge. Okay? And I will, in particular, I will cover a few older works that related already in the past Rydberg physics with gauge theory. But again, this is a history of failures. Okay? Uh, and then we will see instead the main part, which is the new results, and is the origin of these spill liquids. So it, will, it will be an exact solution, and there will be some uh, numerical simulations um, 
to link it to experiments. And then if time allows, I will also show you something about interaction engineering, but I'm so scared about the Godzilla sound that this is very unlikely to happen. Okay, so uh, what it is known about Rydberg and gauge theories before this experiment that Julia performed, okay? There were several works already in the early 2010s by several groups uh, that uh, wanted to do that utilizing digital quantum theory, so universal quantum computer, particularly in the group by Maciek Levenstein. And then there were analog works in one dimension, and actually in Misha's lab, they already had observed a paradigmatic effect in, in particle physics, which is pair production out of perturbation of the vacuum in this paper here. So to some extent, uh, for this kind of uh, scenarios, there is already an experimental reality. But we wanted to move, I mean, the goal is really to move away from one, uh, 1D. And just to have a model that we can refer to as a, as a toy model, uh, I wanted to present you briefly a summary of what is spin ice is, okay? So spin ice is a Hamiltonian, is a model Hamiltonian, which has non-trivial dynamics. And this non-trivial dynamics is actually acting on an Hilbert space, which is the Hilbert space of spins. These are spin one-offs uh, on the bonds of a square lattice. But this Hilbert space is complemented by the so-called ice rules. So the magnetization close to an edge has to sum to zero, for instance. And in this case, with the simple errors, you can see there are two errors in and two errors out. So this implies that if you try to write down the system dynamics, the conventional terms that you will have in an easy model, like uh, single sigma x, or in an x time model, sigma x, sigma plus, they do not work anymore because they violate this Gauss law. For instance, here, if we flip a single spin, we have one, one in and three out. So this will not work. The same will not work with two. The minimal dynamics is made out of four spins. So you see, if you start flipping them, they come back to a configuration that still satisfies the two in, two out rule. Okay? And the minimal Hamiltonian, if one writes it quantum mechanically, is something like this, which is, of course, also very close to, to quantum Daimler models and so on and so forth. Okay? And how people, I mean, people have tried to do that in cold atoms for a long time. Uh, there are several strategies, and I think it will take me, uh, including some time here by one of the organizers, but uh, I just want to give you the, just the formulas to what the typical strategy is. Uh, what one does is typically enforces the constraint, the conservation laws, just putting a strong energy penalty for all, all the states that uh, do not satisfy that, and then add the dynamics in perturbation theory. So when you imagine a single plaquette like that, what happens in perturbation theory, you first flip two spins, pay an energy cost due to this penalty, and then flip the other two spins, okay? Come back in the same, in a configuration which has expectation value of this H, H zero equal to zero, okay? So this has been one of the strategies that people have tried to utilize, and including us, I mean, what, what we try to do, is, uh, is trying to do that exactly in these Rydberg experiments that Misha later built. But you immediately realize that if you try to build this Hamiltonian, it's a mess, okay? The reason why it is a mess is not the x, y terms. It's because these kind of constraint terms that want to impose the Gauss law, they put equal interactions between all the four spins that are close to a vertex. And this is something very unnatural, okay? The reason is the following. Actually, there are several reasons. The first reason is that these interactions are plateau-like. So this guy interacts with this one, but has zero interaction with the next one, okay? The same here. And then, the other point is that this guy has interaction equ uh, equal at this one lattice spacing and square root of two. Okay? And then the other point is that interaction depends on orientation. Okay? So if you take, for instance, this atom, this has a very strong interaction with this one, but zero interaction on the other. And of course, realizing this interaction pattern is a challenge. Okay? If you have isotropic interaction, there is no way you can do this. Okay? What one has to do is utilizing certain um, uh, uh, atomic physics systems, which are called uh, p-states, uh, I mean, Rydberg state with, the, with p states. So if you want the electronic cloud, is very strong anisotropic in space. And by doing a lot of fine tuning with Hamiltonian parameters, one can realize potentials which are captured by this picture here. These are the potential for, of this atom with respect to the rest, which have more or less the same shape of Gauss law. But you see there is a lot of imperfection because this stuff is not really plateau-like and so on and so forth. So all these proposals, they, they remain not realized, okay? Of course, they can be also generalized to other lattices, but this is somehow not important. They were not realized. And most important from the theory's viewpoint, all of these proposals, they le led to ordered phases. So phases that from the condensed matter viewpoint can be considered boring, okay? There was never spin liquids, okay? And the reason 
for those of you that, uh, that are familiar with liquid also from the solid state viewpoint, is that there is no way to get a constraint theory which leads as an emergent description to a quantum dimer model on a lattice which is not bipartite but doing these tricks. This is really non possible. Okay? So, if for instance, if you want to realize something like a Ballard Fisher Gervin model, this will require interactions that are, not in, that are incompatible with Rydberg. Or if you use the Rydberg, they will not lead to the correct description in terms of dimer model. So, we fail and we stop working on this. Okay? Until these guys came, I think this is really a very nice piece of work. Um, and the very basic essence of this work, if one interprets it from the theory viewpoint, is said, okay, we don't want to study just a quantum dimer model, but we want to study a dimer model where we also put additional defects. So you see here, this is a Kagome lattice. We put dimers on the bonds on this Kagome, but sometimes there are vertices where there is no dimer. Okay? This is what is called a monomer in the, in the language of dimer model. And actually, this was already proposed somehow in a bit by Ignacio Sirac and others in a completely different context. Okay? But this then, this work wanted to really push, push it and show that in concrete models, one can, this kind of mechanism leads to spill liquid. Okay? I mean, I, I, I will not go ahead, and I think there is plenty of numerical evidence in that work that this spill liquid exists, but I want to now challenge the theoretical description. Okay? So the proposed description of this model was then this quantum numbers plus the Higgs. Uh, but there is no magnetic field term, there is no plaquette. And then this is somehow puzzling, okay? Because then you open your high energy book and then you say, okay, let me look at the gauge theory U1 plus X, whether there is a phase which is a spill liquid, which is deconfined. And this is the phase diagram of this phase, of, of, of this model, as a function of two different couplings. Okay? This is the one over the plaquette, this is something that you don't care, it's coupled to Higgs. And then you realize that the pro proposed description of the model that I mentioned before is denoted by this orange area. But then you look where this orange area is, it's actually at infinity here. There are no gauge fluctuations, so it's, there is to no, be no spill liquid. Okay, so this implies that this description in terms of just dimer and monomers, uh, it's not leading us to a, an understanding of why there is a spill liquid here. Okay? In principle, there should be even not be. So the, the thing that we put forward, uh, it's something very different, is to try to map this kind of models to exactly soluble models, okay? Pioneered by Kitaev, okay? Uh, now, this is a painful slide. <laughs> I will try to go slow. Uh, but it's defining essentially a model on the Ruby lattice. So we take, we define spin one-half variables, or if you want, arcore bosons, on the bonds of the Kagome lattice. And then we have three classes of terms. There is a first class of terms, very simple. It's a B dagger, B term on nearest neighbor. This is like an XY interaction, okay? And these are just these two terms. Nearest neighbor, nothing more. Then there is another class of terms, which are these blue guys here. These are terms that only involve a single site. If, we're, if you were writing this as a leasing model, this will be sigma X and this will be sigma Z. Okay, so far the Hamiltonian is very, very simple. And then there is another class of terms, which are interaction, which are in an easy model, it will be like sigma z, sigma z, between either next nearest neighbor and next to next nearest neighbor. On top of this, we assume that nearest neighbor interaction on the triangular plaquette of the Kagome are infinity. Okay? So this is a two-body Hamiltonian, nothing special. This is, we will call it an XY model plus transfer speed. Now, what I want to show you is that this model maps exactly into this Hamiltonian, which is now something that some of you may recognize. This is a Kitaev model, but not defined on the square lattice, defined on the Kagome lattice. Okay? And uh, here what we are doing, we are again defining spin variables, spin one-half variables on these bonds, but we have two classes of terms. Okay? There is the first, oops, sorry. The first term here, is a product of sigma z close to each vertex, okay? This, if you think about in the gauge theory viewpoint, this is Gauss law, okay? In Kitaev model, it's just an energetic term close to, the, close to the vertex. Then there are two other terms, this b. Since now we have two types of plaquettes, we can have two types of non-trivial moves that, uh, that satisfy this Gauss law. This one is on the triangle. It's a product of sigma x around the triangle. the orange one, and then there is another one, which is uh, a product of uh, sigma x's 
around a non econ plaquette, uh, around a non plaquette, exaggerated plaquette. Okay. That's it, and, and on this show you can add staggered fields and so on and so forth, doesn't matter. So this is textbook Kitaev model, and we know immediately that if we are able to, to tune it in a parameter regime where this ter term is not there, and, and these terms are dominant, since they commute with Gauss law, we will get immediately a ground state of the system, which is an equal weight superposition of all the possible diamond coverings, which is the definition of a uh, RVB state. Okay. So if you want to understand it from the gauge theory, if you want, these are the gauge fluctuation. We want to make them large. Okay. How does the mapping between this very simple two particle Hamiltonians that I showed before and this stuff work? Uh, the mapping uh, works as follows. It is actually based on the fact that there cannot be more than one atom close to its triangle, this Rydberg blockade phenomenon. So this is the Hilbert space of the Rydberg system. There are only four states if you have a maximum one particle, either no particles or one particle in either of the three possible bonds. On the left side, instead, these are the states in the toric code. And for the states where there are no Rydberg, we define the toric code states as an equal weight superposition of three dimers or zero dimers. If instead we have state with one Rydberg, the only thing that we do in this superposition, we either cut a dimer here and add a dimer here. Okay. This mapping is one to one, that's it. The only weird thing is that it maps into off diagonal states in the toric code. So uh, it's not immediately clear how the interactions are mapped. Okay. And if one applies this mapping to cartoon states, one notices that in the toric code there are vertices which have uh, odd number of uh, of dimers close to that. So they satisfy a Gauss law with an expectation of value minus one. And then there will be vertices which instead have only two dimers or four dimers or zero dimers. So they are even dimers. We interpret these vertices as something, uh, vertices that host a single Higgs field, a single monomer, an excitation of the theory. Okay? So these are the odd gauge charges and these are the even. It's a bit strange, but that's, uh, that's it. Okay? Uh, so that's a mapping between universe space. You can say, so what? If it tells you nothing about the Hamiltonian, it's completely useless, okay? Then one goes down and writes down the Hamiltonian, and it turns out that this mapping works under the following assumption, that the plaquette interaction at triangles is very strong, it's technically infinity, while the other plaquette interaction is zero. Who cares? We know from Kitaev, we just need one of the moves to have a spin liquid. We don't need the other, okay? So that's kind of good, and uh, exactly, this is what I was mentioning, and what can, can one do? then is analyze this model, equal weight superposition, diamond covering, this is a spin liquid. Okay. So blockaded model, this very simple XY models with transverse field and blockade, by definition, they realize uh, they can have uh, exact spin liquid ground state, at least in some simple parameter regimes. In this case, it's just fine with the helio of W, for instance. Okay? They are uh, very good for the confinement. Notice that there is no plaquette term here, we just have very simple interactions. So now, are these statements stable? Because maybe we are just lucky, we have some very uh, good ground state, but then uh, this is, uh, the excitation gaps are very small and so on and so forth. These are some numerical results. And here what, what, uh, what is plotted in, in, in uh, this kind of state diagram is results of an exact diagonization of a small system. And what we are plotting is the overlap between the ground state and the exact RVB wave function. And these are the two parameters of the microscopic model, which will be two parameters of the gauge theory. And these are the quantum spin liquid state. This is exactly soluble point. And these are instead ordered phases. This M and E are ordered phases. So there is a stable and relatively large quantum spin liquid state. And the way we, we extract it, is, I think, is not particularly important. What I also find interesting is that these reader models are somehow nasty. It's very hard to find efficient cluster, uh, classical algorithm to study them. In this, uh, for instance, in, in this parameter regime, we found that there are uh, also efficient, for instance, in this case, Monte Carlo algorithm that one could use to, to study this spin liquid. Uh, now, what happens instead if we try to go, I mean, so far in, in this parameter regime, the experimental, uh, the, the experimental uh, parameter regime is not exactly in this plane, so we have to add a diff additional uh, axis. And what we did, we did that, and uh, what we realized is that actually there is an exact adiabatic continuity, so if you follow the path in parameter space from this exactly soluble point to the spin liquid, the, to the parameter regime that was realized in the experiment, indeed, or actually in, in the theory paper, not in the experiment, indeed, one find that this is in, uh, in, uh, in the same phase. So there is really a, a direct correspondence 
uh, between the spin liquid proposed in this DMRG work and, and this analytically found one. Okay. Uh, the other thing that we did uh, is trying to study these spin liquids because they look a bit weird if we analyze the, the, the exotization spectrum. So what we did, we sit inside the spin liquid phase and we found out a way of doing spectroscopy utilizing actually quantum Monte Carlo. Uh, it's, it's a bit uh, involved the way we do that. Actually, it looks contradiction, but it, it can be done. Uh, and uh, what we did in particular in this quantum spin liquid, one of the characteristic features is that the ground state on a torus has to be first of all degenerate, and there must be a finite excitation gap to the fifth excited state. Uh, and this, these are the energies that we have computed, and we confirm both that there is a degenerate ground state manifold and there is a finite excitation gap. And one can do also a simulation on a cylinder and show that there the degenerate is actually not formed at two. Okay? So, but it's a bit weird because if one looks at the numbers, Okay, maybe this is too small. These energy scales are very small. These are 10 to the minus four, the microscopic coupling. And this smells trouble because it implies that, uh, it's, it's actually weird, typically when, when you have a local Hamiltonian and you have an exact ground state manifold, you expect that the first excitation gap is large. In the, in the Kitaev uh, Onicom model, this is always like this. If you are in a topological phase, small correlation length, large overlap with Heimer covering means very large gap. In this model, this is not true, okay? And the fact is not true, for a field theory analysis, this tells you that Lorentz invariance is, is strongly violated, okay? Um, final point, experimental, I mean, how do they prove this spill liquid in the experiments? So what Julia and coworkers did, they studied very non-local order parameters. So these non-local order parameters are inspired, they're different, but they are inspired by an object which uh, has been introduced by Fredenhagen and Marco in the 80s to study the confinement of theories where there is, for instance, in their case, they were interested in fermionic theories, actually. And uh, it's actually done graphically by, by these curves. I mean, you should interpret these curves as follows. When you have a gauge theory, uh, you imagine you have a path integral, you have imaginary time and real space. The way you typically detect confinement is you take a path in real space, you go up in imaginary time, and you close it. This square is called Wilson loop. And the Wilson loop tells you whether you are confined or not. If you have matter, what you have to do, you don't have to do that. The whistle loop is not good enough. What you do, you propagate in imaginary time to, to particles, and then you join them somewhere else, okay? And the ratio between these two objects detects the confinement, okay? Of course, this is not what, uh, it's very hard to probably measure this in experiments because this there there is, will require a very large interference. Uh, so this is not what has been measured in experiments. I mean, is, is this something good or not? And what we did, uh, we said, okay, let us take a simple theory, let us go back to spin eyes and see whether the real space with the loop is actually as good as the one in imaginary time. This is a work that we did a few years ago uh, for unrelated reasons, because we wanted, okay, very good. Uh, <laughs> and there we studied both string excitation in this kind of models and this very weird Wilson loop in real space. And we found that this was a drastic failure, okay? These real space order parameters, they never worked. They were actually giving the wrong physical information. And these are some examples. This is disordered parameter as a function of the air of the system. If the phase is, the, in this case, the phase is confined, we were expecting lines one on the top of the other. These lines are actually not even straight. This is not even clear what they mean, this, this correlation function. And we also try to extract what is so-called um, string tension out of this object. This string tension was off by 80% with respect to the value that we compute by independent means. So this calls for a word of caution, because I think it's, uh, these sort of parameters are very interesting, but uh, one should be careful in interpreting experiments based on those, and I think the, the, this boils down really to the fact that these blockaded models, they have a very extreme breaking of Lorentz invariance, and some of these sort of parameters, uh, they require a lot of care, okay? Uh, okay, this part I stop because uh, I don't want to let the sound go twice. <laughs> okay, um, so this I, 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 the conclusion. I think uh, there are new classes of models. Very simple. Take two body X Y models on faceted lattices. Put a blockade, which is a very natural interaction pattern. There are possible ways of realizing spill liquids. Uh, these models can actually reali be realized by a technique which is called Rid Rydberg dressing. In this I call Rydberg blessing. Okay, sorry for the typo. Um, uh, but I also want to say that all this theoretical understanding, in my opinion, is also important because it teaches us that uh, we should maybe
carefully reanalyze what the diagnostics of, of these liquids are in experiments because uh, these states are kind of uh, uh, very complicated. Okay, that's it. And these are the people. Thank you for your attention. <laughs>